this is on my chin. I try not to um, gesticulate too much. Anyway, hi, I'm Kari. Um, I teach swimming technique, and um, I, I'm interested in in developing a, a people's relationship with water, improving their relationship with water, and improving their um, body awareness, so that when when you're in water, you've got a, a way of uh, Telling where you are in space, without, but without that contact on the ground. Right, this is uh, the director of the Japanese total immersion, and it's it's an open water swimming technique. If you see his arms are really relaxed. Often, when you see the staff of say a triathlon, you get a lot of windmilling arms with people with a lot of tension. Um, but we can't fly and uh, nothing happens with your arms in the air. Now if you look, it's quite difficult to see when he's breathing. Yeah. He just breathes. It's part of the stroke. It doesn't interrupt the forwardness of the stroke. And also, if you notice, he's doing very... I'm pointing at this screen. He's doing very little kicking yeah. with, with his legs. And the kicking is just used to rotate his hips so that his body gets out of the way as his arm comes through. If you think, um, if you do, say you're doing a triathlon, you use the biggest muscles in your body to kick your legs. And for a long distance, it gives you very little forward propulsion, only about five, 10 percent. So if you can get as well balanced as Shinji, um, you, don't, you don't get out absolutely knackered. <coughs> Again, he doesn't cross his centre line, so he's not snaking up and down the pool. And if you look, he's hardly disturbing that water at all. And it, it's absolutely remarkable. And he can go on mile after mile after mile. Now what he's got is fantastic balance. Most of us use the kick not only to go forwards, but to get, keep your legs up behind. Particularly men, um, we women have a bit more of an advantage with our subcutaneous fat or biofree, as I like to call it. <laughs> um, but I'll talk about how you can all float a bit later. But I think it's mesmerising just watch, you know, watching the epic thing of that happening. Anyway, so it's a lyrical, sustainable stroke. Now then, what would I want to say about... Oh yeah, I was just saying, if you want to really exhaust yourself, try kicking on your back, push off to a length and really kick to the max and you will end up out of breath. Whereas this guy, he can just swim and swim and swim. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about a bit about people's um, experience. A lot of pool swimmers, their first um, experience of overburden water is something like the Great North Swim. Um, and I've seen people go and do those sort of events, and it's the first time they've worn a wetsuit. It's the first time they've swum out of, out of doors. And I, I really think it's a great thing to do the swimming out of doors. You're replacing tumble turns with um, sighting and how, how you navigate. And even if there's even a small bit of chop, it's very difficult to see the, the marker boys when you're, you're swimming around. Um, and if your nerves are jangled and you try to swim fast. Um, I also, also find that if people have worked on their swimming and they've improved it, so they get a bit more like Shinji was, they get into an event like this and they're so taken up with trying to look as if they're trying hard and swimming faster. They just go back to their five-year-old swimmer. Um, I had a friend who's just done her beach lifeguard and um, her, her trainers were uh, asking her to show, um, what was it? Uh, yes, swim with urgency when she was trying to get to the casualty. And she was very cross about that because she said, 
it, it, she wouldn't be swimming any faster, she'd just be swimming with urgency. So it takes quite a lot of guts <laughs> to stop trying to swim fast. Because, you know, there's a limit to how fast you can wiggle on your arms, and then the technique has to drop in. And then, let's see, how do we move on? Here we go. Um, this is uh, an event, a frightening event like that, which I, I did in uh, San Francisco. Um, you, uh, you, you have a briefing about the currents. And, uh, the first current is one, you go on a ferry, the first current is one that's going to sweep you around to the back of the island. And then you get to a point where the two currents meet. I don't move both arms. Two currents meet and it's called the potato patch and it's a bit like swimming through a plough field. And then you get the current which is going to sweep you down out to the Golden Gate to the waiting horde of man-eating sharks which are out there. And uh, then there's the sea lions, lots of big sea lions. And they're rumoured to want to mate with swimmers in play. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the pelicans. <laughs> and um, the friend I was swimming with was much faster than me, much fitter, personal trainer. And uh, we were there corralled in the ferry with lots of other swimmers in wetsuits. And that, t that awful tension, it's sort of infectious when you're standing there. Then you get to the place you're going to be chucked off and um, you jump into the sea. And within an instant, not a swimmer to be seen. And uh, it took me quite a while to, to calm down. And I think most open water events, it does take a while when you're trying to, you know, you're trying to win or something. Um, so I, I thought, no, oh, yes, I know what I'm doing. There's lots of concrete buildings in San Francisco. It's easy to find your, your sighting points. So I just thought I'll settle down. I'll be, I'll be one of the late arrivers. They'll all be rest and waiting to go by the time I get in. So I settled down and swam. You swim mainly diagonally across across a current. And I'm so pleased with this photo. Um, this is the official photo of the race. There was a, a poor photographer crouched in a kayak just by the entrance to the harbour. You, 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 you're hit, you've got to hit the entrance to the harbour to get to the finish point. And um, he was in just the right place to catch the swimmers and the island behind. So uh, I, I'm very pleased with that. Um, and then we got into the bear, into the harbour, and a few stragglers, I thought, like me, just turned up because the water's a bit quieter. And to my surprise, I ended up within two seconds of, of my friend, who's much faster. And it took, oh, an hour, hour and a half for the rest of the swimmers to get in. So I didn't come anywhere near first, obviously, but um, I did better than I thought. And I think, you know, like, like Rob was talking about cycling, um, if you keep your head, uh, you can go on swimming forever, and you can do some quite, you know, quite big things. And it's where maturity kicks in. It's very good. Now, what are we moving on to now? No, no, wrong thing. Hang on. There we go. Um, this is uh, going on about. Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> Ooh, no idea. Let's go back. I hope you're enjoying this uh, technical tour. Ooh, yeah. Um, uh, talking about being calm and mature, the, the other thing that can cause havoc when you're swimming outside it, uh, are imagined fears. Um, uh, you know, you've got the, the horrible sharks in San Francisco. And places like Loch Ness, um, they're very black and dark, they're very deep. And, you know, the monsters are there. <laughs> and the, the only way you can deal with it is you have to switch that switch off. I've met channel swimmers and all sorts of people. If you, if you just, if you, you can, you can do it. Switch it off. Now then, um, I do believe that technique is the key, though. And uh, I'm going to use an example. Tom Frost is a triathlete. He won the London age groups last year in the non-professionals. He won the age groups in uh, Abu Dhabi, and he qualified for the World Series in Las Vegas this year. Um, and he, the example, in 2009, he swam the Windsor Triathlon. And the swim, you do two thirds of it out against the current and a third with the current. And that year he did it in 24 minutes, 20 seconds. So he thought, oh, he hadn't trained much in swimming for that. 
Uh, so he trained really hard, did it the next year. He did it in 24 minutes, he knocked 20 seconds off. And then he won the age groups in Abu Dhabi last year, 2011. Um, and he did it, well, say 24 minutes again. And uh, he thought, right, I'm going to really go out and win this one this year. So he, uh, for the first time, he got himself a triathlon coach. Um, and he was doing 9K a week, in, in mainly in the pool at Swiss Cottage in London. And, uh, and he thought, ah, he's got to have improved. So he gets out to Abu Dhabi again about a month ago. First kilometre was horrible. Next 500 metres, all right. But he thought, yeah, I swam 600 kilometres in the Swiss cottage pool. Result, one minute slower. So what he's done now, he's uh, booked in for doing stroke analysis. And I, it, it, will, it will help. So he likens it a bit to golf or tennis. You know, if you whack a golf ball harder, will you play better? All right. Oh, and we have a picture of him rather than not less. Where is he? There we are. That's uh, doing his first, first um, Ironman. Now then. This is my, one of my favourite pictures. But I'm afraid, because this is, I, I, I blame the, the computer. This is a PC and uh, it came out bluer in my uh, machine. I don't know if you can see, these are a pair of hands, and you can see a face in there. Um, and it, I always, uh, when I'm teaching swimming, talk to people about how you follow your hands through, through a hole in the water. And it, it's a sort of uh, way of imagining it. And then I got that photo that actually shows it. Um, I, I, I spend a lot of time um, like every other sport, uh, swimming is to do with your core. You don't swim, fish don't swim by flapping their arms around, and in fact, we don't either. Um, one of my favourite drills is um, head leg dolphin, where you put your hands by your sides and you just undulate, feet together, length after length. Um, and that really does start to connect your core and give you that, that confidence that you can you can float and move in the water without, you know, using your arms and using your legs. Which, if you go back to Shinji again, I mean, that, that was it. It was the stillness. It was a peace, wasn't it? Um, now then, oh, well, I'm doing this without notes, hey. Right, it's core drills, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it might be worth your while when you're thinking about improving your swimming, looking at a video of, of your own technique. I've seen lots of people who, um, they're only aware of the palms of their hands when they swim. Or you get some people who've got a disconnect between their upper body and their lower body. So they're very active down to their chests and they <laughs> drag the rest along like a sledge. Um, or you get people who swim with their heads high because they're a bit worried about breathing. So for every centimetre your head lifts, your hips drop by two centimetres. So you're swimming like that, along, and it's, it's a real drag. A drag is a drag. Or you get the lateral blindness, where people only breathe to one side, and so they have, they're imbalanced. You can't, you can't swim well unless you've got synchronised stroke. Um, oh, and then you get people who've got a sort of convulsive kick, even in, even in front crawl. And, if you look at that shape, if you stick even a toe out of that, you stop yourself dead. Try it sometime. Go to the pool, push off in really good streamlined position, and then just spread eagle yourself, and you stop dead. It, it's remarkable. Um, right, balance. Men in particular find this very difficult. Um, I've already talked about how women are so much better at it, haven't I? Yeah. Um, but Especially you, you honed guys, the ones who do ultra marathons, who haven't got an ounce of extra body fat on. Um, I've, I've had runners before that I've, I've been um, working with, and they have negative buoyancy in a metre of water. You'll find them lying flat on the bottom of the pool. It's remarkable. <laughs> but believe it or not, even they can learn to float. 
Um, and water is very counterintuitive. If you if you decide if you try to float, you're on the bottom. If you try to get to the bottom, you're floating. So to learn to float, number one, you've not got to care about it. And, oh yes. Um, oh yeah. I was just this note. This is worth having because I've got I've got a picture to do with it. Um, it's, uh, I always get a bit upset when I see kids being taught to swim wearing those armbands when they're sort of suspended above the water. Um, no, wrong thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, this, is, uh, this is my great niece and uh, a family portrait. It's really nice. Again, it's a little bit dark in that. Um, but that's water babies um, training, and if I've seen a couple of kids around here tonight, if you ever get a chance, take take them, let them learn to swim like that. Um, she started before she could walk, and I think she's only about 15 months in that in that thing, and she looks more more relaxed than her parents do. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Um, I think it's just this nice thing of it being totally inclusive, really. Now then, I am. Uh, so my point being, you 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 want to find balance to be able to float, and you can balance. You don't have to float on top of the water. Swimming is actually about being in the water, not on the water. Um, I, I've got this thing where I chuck an onion in the water when I'm teaching people to swim, and for some reason it's the same density as a human body, and there's only a tiny little tonsure showing above the onion. Uh, of, the, of a bit of the onion skin, and that's how your head is, how your body is. You, you really are in the water when you're underneath there. Right, so, uh, what are we saying here? I might have to read this very good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so the idea is that you want to be horizontal. Um, and it, like I was saying, uh, it, it's so that you don't have that drag where your feet are dropping, yeah? So you can be horizontal on the top, or two feet under, or even more if you're negatively buoyant. Um, then you need to just connect your core, just lightly. Can you hear me? Just lightly. Um, and you want to think about sli being slippery, not about, not about floating, and about that balance. Um, and don't worry about the breathing. In fact, don't bother. Until you've got the balance, um, you are always going to be out of breath, and if you're out of breath, it makes you panic. And if you're panicking, you're never going to be cool and relaxed. So, once you get out of breath, stop, stand up, try again. Then you get 100% success every time you do it. Um, uh, I mean, look, you can hold your breath forever. The world record for static apnea is something ridiculous, like 11 minutes. And um, if you're fairly relaxed, you can reach two minutes quite easily. Um, it's the first 30 seconds that's so quite difficult to get over. And, and what you do, you, you do what they call breathing up. And you use, your, you use total breath, you use all your ribs. You've got upper ribs, lower ribs, side ribs, back ribs, and your diaphragm. And you, con you, s you concentrate, you stay still, you breathe up for three, three times, not hyperventilating and then very calmly, you stop breathing. Okay. Now, I just happen <laughs> to have a stopwatch here. I wanted one with a, a hand that goes around. But it's quite interesting just to, to feel uh, what it feels like to hold your breath. I don't know if anybody, does anybody do free diving here? Good, well, don't be too cross with me if I get too many things wrong. <laughs> um, but what I think we'll do is um, when, when we, we're going to breathe up three times, I'll, I'll, we'll breathe in for six and out for seven. I'll count you through. And then we'll do that three times, and then you'll breathe in for six, and then if you want to do the breath hold, put your arm up. Now, that'll, that'll put a bit of extra tension into doing it, but if you keel over, then it'll stop them arresting me from murdering you all. <laughs> and um, for those very competitive ones about you, the last one with their hand down wins, of course. Okay, so let me work out how to work this thing. Stop breathing. Three, four, five, six. And put your hand up and gently stop breathing.
I thought I, I thought the free dive was was going to win, but um, again, awful. Uh, quite often, but it's another of these sports that women are, are very very good at. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've got a friend called um, Ed St. Giles and he's doing um, a, a program uh, called Hidden Talents which comes on at the end of this month. I, I could stop this, can try somehow. And um, one of the programs, they do free, they're doing a free diving one where they, they, they've got a, a girl, they take people off the streets and, and try, they try sort of extreme sports. And um, they went down to Italy, and Ed did a bit of work with um, Marco Nonis. And um, Marco, there's, there's a pair of sort of good cop, bad cop uh, coaches for free diving down there. And Marco does, the, the other guy does the bad cop, all the technical stuff and the horrible bre bre breathing and stuff. And um, Marco just does relaxation. And um, he said, and Ed got to four and a half minutes with his face face down in a, a pool, 35 degrees, and he had uh, Marco muttering in his ear, massaging his shoulders, touching his spine, and um, he said the interesting thing about it is that it is totally untechnical. Um, and you have to be able to really relax and believe that you can do it. It's a bit like the mountain biking uh, thing. It, it is a mental, it's a mental exercise, really. Um, and he said, uh, I was talking about the first 30 seconds, and he said that relaxation is like going into a white light, and then as the CO2 builds up in your lungs, because that, that, that's what makes you want to take another breath, it's that build up of CO2. Uh, it sort of pulls you out of the white light, and you've got to go back into the white light, but even deeper. And he says that happens, with these four and a half minutes, that happened quite a few times. And he said, just to encourage you, that between three and four minutes, it was like a sort of narcotic experience. Now, I have no idea what a narcotic experience is, <laughs> but it sounds quite nice. Um, now then, let's, uh, let's go on a little bit. Um, yeah, the first free diving I did was in a submarine escape tank in um, Portsmouth. Um, and it's, 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 it's a frightening place. Uh, each, the depths are marked on the inside of the, the pool. And there's been a lot of frightened submariners who's stuffed in an airlock at the bottom and they've got to come up. And uh, you feel quite, uh, it's quite odd, floating. It, it's like a water tower in the middle of the, the naval, naval thing. It's quite interesting, but very warm, very visual. And I only, I only went, just to be friendly, and I found I really liked it. Um, it was all divers and marines and me doing it. Um, but the, the, the trainers were both yoga teachers, and I had, at that time, I thought it was just butch, you know, thing. And it's not, it's relaxation. Sorry, could you explain how that works exactly, like what you're doing in it? What, in the, in the, in the, in the in tank? In the tank, yeah. It's where you start training. Um, in, in Britain, we don't have a lot of very warm water, and although you can dive in, in there's a place in Bristol you can go. Um, it, it's just a comfortable environment and, and safety. It, it means you can uh, you can have a go at things without floating off. Yeah, but uh, yeah, look online. You can go and do it. It's great. Um, so I did that, and then I went to Dahab, which is um, on the Red Sea. Um, uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, this is the blue. The, this one down here is uh, in the blue hole, which is a fantastic um, hole in the reef. And you dive down, and then there's a tunnel that goes out. If you uh, look on YouTube, there's some there's some fantastic footage of that. But again, you ha you have to believe that you can do it. I wonder how long to say anything else about that. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, I came to these speeches, uh, these talks in Kingsbridge, and there was a surfer there, Andrew Cotton, I think he was called, and he was talking about practicing static apnea while he was driving, which <laughs> made me laugh. Um, not what I'd really uh, recommend, but you know, when you are, you can do an awful lot of stuff in in your busy day. Um, when I've got tight hamstrings, I always. I always touch my toes every time I go to the loo. Maybe not great for blokes, but you know. <laughs> um, or balance when you're doing uh, bus stops and all that sort of thing. Now then, uh, let's move on. 
I have. Um, I'm really interested. I like outdoor swimming. I mean, I love being in pools. I actually, I don't care what the water's like. But um, there are a lot of people, a lot of my friends, who really like cold water. And I find that it varies from year to year with me. It depends how much I've been in. You can, you really can acclimatise. I've got a friend who goes in and she has to wait till the bits between her spine get cold, and then she feels like it's done her good, and then she gets out. Um, I, I actually like doing journeys, so um, I can't be bothered to get in and then get out and get frozen. Um, so I wear a wetsuit quite a lot. Um, but we're, we're so lucky around here. It's, it, I like doing the estuary swims. I've been bagging estuaries, which is very nice. Um, this is the River Dart. Um, I was particularly proud of this. It was a 10 kilometre swim without a wetsuit in 11 degrees. So I was doing well that year. Um, uh, what else? I mean, my favourite ones, I live in, the, in South Devon, and there's a lovely estuary, the Avon, where you swim from Afton Gifford down to Bantham, which is a surfing beach. Um, Burr Island is great. Um, the Yelm, um, and funnily enough, we've been sampling Torquay lately. And Tor it never, I didn't want to go to Torquay, it's horrible. Uh, it drives through the housing estates. And then, um, it's remarkable, the, the, the town's there because the coast is fabulous. And that's Thatcher Rock we did a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's just, you can just get out and do it. Um, I, I remember going to um, Hawaii, uh, Maui, and swimming with turtles and uh, eagle rays. And then I came back and we went to Start Point and there's a colony of seals there. Fantastic um, kelp forests. And I thought, you know, I don't think it was really worth going all around the world. It, it was, it, you know, you can do it at home. <laughs> home, I can't breathe. Okay, now then. My favorite destination though is Iceland. And this is a picture I'm very proud of. Um, that's me, although I can't prove it, <laughs> uh, without a wetsuit, um, swimming about with icebergs. Um, but it's not really so clever as it, and, and, and tough as it looks. Have I only got five minutes? Okay, fine. Um, because water, once it gets below a certain temperature, freezes. So once you know what freezing water feels like, you can get used to it. It's it's not as bad as it sounds. So although that's a fairly cool photo, it's uh, I, I only did it for the photo. I got out quite quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's whiz through and see. I'm I'm just going to sort of show you various pictures of things. This is Iceland. So what's fantastic? If we were in Iceland, I went to an ultra marathon there, and you've got all these hot pots. Um, yeah. Oh, go back. So I, I had, yeah. You, this was at the beginning of the ultra marathon, and it looks like a field, and you get in, and it's hot water, and there's gravel at the bottom. If you put your hand in, it gets hotter as you go out. Oh, it's just fantastic. And if you'd had a hot pot here or a hot tub, maybe we should start to tour one. Uh, just fabulous. But then I, you know, water is everything as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that's a bit of a dark picture, the one on the right, but that's a bit more natural. Um, I did a, an event in Reykjavik. This is in Reykjavik, but these are the guys who were, who were in it. Um, this is sort of natural pools where they're, they're lying about with the, the sea behind. And the sea's quite colder. And in, in Reykjavik, in the main beach, there's a, a 30 meter tank full of hot water, so you go swimming and then you get out and you chat to your friends for hours in there, it's amazing. And all, of, all the towns have all got, the swimming pool is the centre of their community. So instead of going to the village hall, you go to the pool, you sit in the hot tub, it's hot, they call them hot pots. Um, and I think it's a very civilised place. Um, I like Norway too, you get a lot of golf, you get a lot of golf stream there. So it's, a, it's fine swimming right up. I've swum up in Tromso in the Arctic, Arctic Sea, beyond the um, Arctic Circle. Yeah, but the, the, the Gulf Stream goes there. Um, I quite like that photo. I just, I'm just showing you my photo album now. Um, 
let's see, let's scoot on through. There's another lock. A fjord, beg pardon. Um, yeah, I just sort of, I've swum in Moscow, I've swum in Kiev, swum in America with Fiona Lachlan. Um, she's, her father, Terry Lachlan, runs Total Immersion. And for any of you guys, if you want to improve your, your technique, I'd recommend, I'd recommend Total Immersion. Um, Terry Lachlan's uh, technique is absolutely fantastic. There is Swim Smooth in Australia as well, but if you look at, I mean now with, with um, YouTube and everything, there's so much there to look at. But you, then you have to remember it and practice it. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I just hope I've made you think a little bit about swimming technique. I've got a nine minute film here, which you won't want to watch all of it. Um, oh no, hang on, one more good photo. Ah, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh. No, that, I don't want that. I want to show you my good photo. <laughs> Right. Yeah, this is my good photo. Um, I, I, when I finally discovered that you could swim in England, which took me a while, um, I met Kate Rue while I was actually swimming in the Thames. I was swimming from Letchley to Oxford. And um, I don't know if you know her, but she wrote a book called Wild Swim. And I was really lucky. I got to do a lot of the research with her. And, uh, this is on the island of Skye in the fairy pools and it was a lot colder than it looks. Um, and then we move on. There's uh, a lot of meditative stuff you can do. It doesn't have to be events. This is something called water dance. Um, well, it would be if I got it pressed the right button. There we are. Again, this goes on for a while, but I'll just give you a taster of it. Um, this is, uh, uh, there's watsu, which is a mixture of shiatsu and massage in water, where the practitioner just tunes into the breath of the person they're, they're working with. And this is one step further, uh, which they call it water dance, where they take the breath and they take the person underneath the water. And if you can imagine, uh, unlike be, you know, having a massage in, on the, the bed after the race today, um, you don't know where's up, where's down, and uh, it, if you wear a nose clip, so you don't get your sinuses flooded, and uh, it's really very nice. Okay, um, so my final thing to say is, yes, I hope I've made you think a bit about your own swimming practice, and I liken it to a yoga practice, um, not just training, more a gateway to your physical and spiritual awareness. <laughs>